ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ರಾಮ ರಾಮೇದಿ ರಮೇ ನಾಮ ಮನೋರಮೆ ಸಹಸ್ರನಾಮ ತತ್ತುಲ್ಯ ರಾಮನಾಮ ವರಾನನೆ ದ ರೆಪಿಟಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ವಿವಲೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಸಹಸ್ರನಾಮ ಆಫ್ ದ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಡ್ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ವನಮಾಲಿ ಇಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹರ್ ಓನ್ ಬುಕ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ನೋನ್ ಅ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಲೀಲಾ may lord rama's blessings fall upon all those who listen to this with shraddha and devotion faith and bhakti hari om that's it canto 4 the demon king the only one who managed to escape from the fray at janastana was a rakshasa called akampana seeing that it was a lost cause He had hidden himself behind a tree and watched all his friends falling. At last, he returned post-haste to Ravana's capital on the island of Lanka and reported the whole matter. The Rakshasa king could not believe that his best commanders had been killed and his entire army wiped out by one single individual. Ravana glared at him and roared, Who is the foolish person who has dared to meddle with my outpost at Jajasthana? It is obvious that his end is near. Even Indra, the king of gods, is afraid of me. So also Kubera, the god of wealth, and Yama, the god of death. I spell death to death himself. And my wrath can burn up even Agni, the god of fire. Name the person who has dared to defy me. A company shivered with fear and stammered. Uh, my, my lord, it is a man who did it. A man? A human being? I cannot believe it. I have not heard of any report of an army marching to the Janastana. So how can this have happened? There was no army, Your Majesty. It was one single individual who routed the entire army and his name is Rama. He is the son of King Dasharatha, of the clan of Ikshvaku, the ruler of Ayodhya. He and his wife and brother have been exiled and are now living in the forest in Panchavadi. He is dark and handsome and is strong as a lion. He is an amazing archer. and he decimated the entire army single handed ravana could not believe this story he said i'll go immediately to jajasthana and kill this man a company said i would not advise you to do so my lord rama is invincible he can destroy this universe and create a new one if he wants he has command of all astras and weapons you will never be able to beat him in a fair combat but i can tell you a means by which you can defeat him he has a wife called sita whom he loves dearly she is his weak point her beauty is unparalleled in all the three worlds even the gods are bewitched by her charm she is the daughter of the ki- king janaka of mithila you will never be able to withstand her i suggest that you go to the andaga and abduct her if she is lost drama will not be able to live he would pine away and die This is the only way you can destroy him. Ravana's eyes gleamed with green fire at the thought of another conquest to his harem. Your idea is very good, O Akampana, he said. I will go to the forest of Dandaga tomorrow and capture this beauty for myself. As you know, I am a connoisseur of women's beauty. So let me add another jewel to my collection. Ravana called for his golden aerial chariot, yoked to magic asses. with the faces of fiends and went to the ashram of Manicha, the son of Tarata, whom Rama had sent hurtling off for a few hundred miles in his very first battle when he went to save the Yaga of sage Vishyamitra. Manicha had now become an ascetic and was living a simple life at a place called Gokarna. He was honored that the king had come to visit him and paid him all respect. Ravana did not waste time in idle talk and came straight to the point. My dear uncle, he said, Did you hear that the entire Rakshasa encampment at Janasthana has been totally wiped out? Marija was amazed that such a thing could have happened and wanted to know how it took place. It was wiped out by a mere mortal, a man called Rama. At the name of Rama, Marija trembled like a leaf and began to perspire. Ravana pretended not to notice and said, Evidently, Rama seems to possess some sort of extraordinary powers or or else this could not have happened i hear that his wife sita is amazingly beautiful 
I wish to capture her and for that I need your help. That is the only way to punish Rama. Marija said, My lord, have you offended or insulted someone? For it is clear that someone wishes to see your downfall. The person who has suggested this to you is indeed your great enemy. Trying to steal Sita from Rama is like to extract a poisonous tooth from the mouth of a cobra. He is like a wild elephant who will crush you if you taunt him. Please do not attempt this foolish thing. I have had personal experience of his great strength and that too at the age of 16. What will he be like now? That is why I took your life for sannyasa. I am old enough to give you advice and I have nothing to gain or lose from you. So listen to me and leave Sita alone. Let them live happily in the forest and be content with your own harem of wives. Do not lust after another man's wife. Though Ravana was not put off by the tales of Rama's valour, he valued the advice of Maricha and decided to give up his plan and return to Lanka. The next day when Ravana was sitting resplendent on his golden throne and holding court, Shurpanega rushed in with her tale of woe. Ravana was extremely noble-looking, the hero of many wars. There was no end to his glories. He and his son Meganatha had even defeated Indra, the king of the gods. Ravana was the son of Vaishravas and the half-brother of Kubera, whom he had defeated and from whom he had stolen the beautiful flying machine called Pushpaga, made out of flowers. He had obtained a boon from Rama that he could not be killed by demons, gods, celestial beings or beasts. In his arrogance, he did not ask for immunity from humans since he thought they were not worthy of his might. His atrocities and iniquities had become so great that gods were forced to approach Brahma and ask for protection. Vishnu had appeared before the gods and agreed to incarnate as a human being in order to kill Ravana. This had happened just at the time when King Dasaratha was holding his great Yaga for the sake of progeny and Rama, the seventh incarnation of Vishnu, had been born as his son. Shupanega now stood before Ramana and started howling like a mad dog about her bad luck. The story she told was totally different from the actual fact. She began with a burst of vituperative insults hurled at her brother. What sort of a king are you? She shrieked. You sit here indulging in wine and women, totally oblivious of your duty. Don't you know that your outpost at Jadasthana has been totally wiped out by a mere mortal called Rama? Ravana let her rant and rave for some time. Then he interrupted her. Who is this Rama? What does he look like? What are his weapons? <coughs> Rama is the king of Dasharatha of Ayodhya. He looks like the god of love incarnate, but he's deadly in combat. He shoots forth arrows which are like crow brows. He has a brother called Lakshmana, who is as valiant as he is and is completely devoted to him. He also has a wife called Sita, who is a woman whose beauty is beyond compare. He loves her very much and she is devoted to him. She has one of the most captivating figures that I have ever seen. Her complexion is that of molten gold. Her waist is slender and keep and be spent by your hand. Her breasts are full and her hair is long and lustrous. Her eyes are like lotus petals and her beautiful hands have rounded pink tipped nails. There is no woman to equal her in all the three worlds. Seeing her, I thought that she would make a perfect mate for you. I tried to capture her and bring her to you as my gift. And this is what Lakshmana did to me. Rama was furious when I tried to capture his beloved wife and would have killed me had I not been a woman. As it is, he has maimed me for life. If you have any compassion for me, if you want to avenge the death of your people at Jarasthana, if you want to own that beauty for yourself, Go immediately and kill those two and capture her for yourself. Ramana dismissed the court and pondered over his sister's words. He knew that Rama would be no mean match for him, but his heart beat fast and thought of getting Sita for himself. At last his lust overcame his caution and he went again to Marija's ashrama. Marija saw him coming and was filled with foreboding, but he masked his feelings and welcomed the great personage. What has brought you once again to this humble abode, my dear Lord, he asked. Ravana replied, I told you already about this mean creature, Rama, who has killed my general and his forces at Janasthana and mutilated my sister. Obviously, he's a wicked fellow, or else his father would not have banished him. Uncle, you are the only one who can help me now. My sister has pointed out 
the Sita Rama's weak point. If I capture her, he is as good as dead. Now this is where you come in. I want you to take the form of a golden deer and go near Rama's ashrama. You should frisk and frolic in front of Sita and beguile her so that she will ask Rama to catch the deer for her. You should then lead him far away from the hermitage so that Sita will be left alone. Then I will go and capture her. What do you think of my plan? Marija shivered at the thought of invoking Rama's wrath once again. His mouth had gone dry and he could hardly speak. At last he stammered out a few words. My, my child, you're a king and you're surrounded by psychophants. They will speak only what is pleasing to your ears and not as what is good for you. Rama is full of noble qualities. He is more powerful than Indra and Kubera. His wrath will surely fall on your head if you steal Sita. She is dearer to him than his life. She will surely be the cause of your death. You are now the happy and powerful king of the Rakshasas. If you want it to last, let Rama alone. You have many women in your harem, all equally beautiful. Why should you lust after another man's wife? Ravana remained silent and Marija thought he had almost convinced him. So he went on with his story. I will tell you of my first encounter with Rama when he was only a boy of 16. Once when sage Vishwamitra was performing a yaga, I was bent on disturbing it. So Vishwamitra brought Rama to protect his Yatnashala. I remember him vividly. What a wonderful picture he presented, young and handsome with a huge bow in his hand. But I thought he was only a boy and continued with my act of desecrating the Yatnishara. For some reason, Rama did not kill me, but his arrow pierced me and carried me many miles out and dropped me into the ocean. A few years ago, I had my next encounter with, with him in the Dandaga forest. You know how we Rakshasas love to eat the flesh of the rishis living in the forest. I had gone with two others, taking on the form of a deer, and we had killed many rishis. Before I saw Rama, I thought that I would gore him to death to punish him for what he had done to me. I went near and charged him with lowered horns. He shot just three arrows at us, and my companions died on the spot. Somehow I managed to escape. Since then, I decided to turn over a new leaf and take to the life of a recluse. I live here alone in this forest and shun all company. I have given up eating flesh and killing people and live only on fruits and roots. I'm old and tired of all I want is to be left in peace and do penance for my sins. The very mention of the name Rama frightens me out of my wits. If you persist in this foolish plan, both of us will surely die. As for the tragedy of Janasthana, I am sure Shurpanega must have instigated Rama's wrath. By listening to her lies, he would also come to a bad end. Ravana now gave up all pretense of trying to coax Maricha. He had made up his mind to go on with his suicidal plan. Fate was beckoning to him to his approaching doom. In an angry voice, he said, Maricha, you are overstepping the limits of decorum in talking to your king like this. I do not need any advice from you about what I should do. All I want is implicit obedience. Go immediately to Amar's ashram in the form of a golden deer and entice him deep into the forest. If Lakshmana remains behind to guard Sita, you should imitate Lama's voice and cry in a loud voice, Ha Sita, Ha Lakshmana. Sita will be frightened and send Lakshmana after Rama. At that time, I will enter the hermitage and capture her. After having done this, you can return to your own abode. If, however, you refuse to obey me, I shall send you straight away to the abode of Yama. Maricha was in a sorry plight, but he realized that there was no way out. He knew he was doomed to die either way. So he thought to himself it was better to die at Rama's hands than at the hands of this wicked nephew of his. He said sorrowfully, Ravana, I see that we are both doomed. If you capture Sita, remember you will be capturing death in your arms. As for me, this will be my third and last encounter with Rama. Ravana scarcely heard what he said. Come on, let us be away, he said. I will drop you near the ashrama so that no time will be lost. He took Baricha in his aerial vehicle, drawn by the magic asses, and they soon came to the vicinity of Rama's ashrama. The chariot landed, and Ravana told Baricha to make haste and change his form. Thus ends the fourth canto, called The Demon King, 
of the Aranya Kanda in the glorious Ramayana of the sage Valmiki. Hari Om. That's it.